Hi, Kevin Kelleher again. Uh, you have been reading and studying and, and discussing performance appraisals here for a little while. And by now, I believe you've probably had a chance to go ahead and actually do one, the graphic rating scale. And if I can predict what may have happened is you probably found your scores all over the place. We're going to talk just a little bit about how that happens. It, basically, our disagreement on scores, uh, our lack of consistency on scoring, comes for two reasons. Number one, there are issues with the tool you use, the form, the way it's designed, uh, lack of guidances, uh, behavioral anchors or such. You're going to get into those. The other half is rater errors, things that are done by the rater, lack of even being trained by the rater, biases that the rater may have. We're going to talk about just one of those rater biases right now. This is not the reason, this particular method that we're going to talk about, but it is only one of many, but it'll, use a, it'll be a good example of, of how that affects how a rater evaluates somebody in a performance appraisal. I'd like you to take yourself a piece of paper and, and make yourself a crosshair like this, a horizontal line and a vertical line. We're going to call these continuums because they have a high side and a negative side high and negative. This horizontal continuum I want you to label affiliative. Affiliative. Affiliative means your need, your desire, your want for a human company in the world. If you're high on the affiliative scale, if you're way out here, you're a people person. If you're low on the affiliative score, you're a task person. I need to tell you, neither one of these are evil. Neither one of these is better than the other. We need both sides of this thing. The vertical side here, I want you to write control on. You need to have people who control in the world. Otherwise, there would be no change. And sometimes you need that. People who are high in control take control of their environment. They do not accept the world or the organization in the way it was offered. They like to mold it to fit their needs. People who are low or below the standard here pretty much accept the, the world the way it's offered. They're good soldiers, good citizens of the organization. You don't see a lot of grievances out of these people here unless they truly, truly feel greatly wrong. We're up here, they're comfortable doing that. They're comfortable taking control of that environment. Let's take a little bit of, let me tell you a little bit about this. Let me humanize this one here for you because I want to see you get this control thing right. My wife and I are in town. It's right here is Evanston, Illinois. It's where we're at. I could probably get on the roof of this building and see Lake Michigan. Let's just say they got a restaurant over there, and I'm sure they do, with a nice view of Lake Michigan. We may go out to dinner tonight. And uh, we would go to the, uh, the main room, and the person who seats you says, would you like a table for two? Yes, we would, thank you. And we're walking to that back corner of the room with the grease stain on the carpet that gets right near the restaurant, you know, where they, where they make the, where they actually wrap the napkins with silverware all together and make all the noise. And I can see where we're going. And I say, you know, is that booth over there by the window that, that overlooks beautiful Lake Michigan available? And she says, yes. Can we have that one? Yes, sure you can, follow me. She turns right and brings us over to the booth. We sit down, my wife says to me, I hate when you do that. When I do what? I hate when you push people around. What do you mean? I thought you'd rather sit over here. Well, I would. You wanna go sit back on a corner by the noise and the, and the grease? No. How do you win these kind of things? People who control their environment will seek those changes and people who accept their environment will not. She would be led back there and be happy where, and, and never be happy where she's sitting, but she would sit where she was told to sit. And I would hear about that. Somebody above this line is looking to control their environment a little more. The neat part about this, ladies and gentlemen, isn't which of these two you are, which of these two you are, it is about how these areas interplay because you aren't one, but you are more than one or two or three of these things. And they shape 
the way you see the world, and they affect what you call a good job or a bad job. We tend to reward well those things that we like, things we agree with. We tend to score poorly things that are unlike us or we disagree with. So let's take a little look at how this works here for us. People who are task people will always err on the side of task accomplishment over relationship preservation. Follow me on that? People who are on this end of the affiliative score will always err on the side of accomplishing the job instead of keeping friends. You see these people at work all the time. They're task people. They don't care what you think about them. We don't come here to be social. We come here to work. And sometimes the more you do this, the less you are of doing this. You know, these, these faces should be starting to pass through your heads right about now. On this scale over here, I just told you, these are the people who have shaped their environment, don't accept it the way it's offered, versus those people who do the trick is how they blend together. Let's take a look at this. If you have somebody who is a controller, seeks to be in control of their environment, of their workplace, and who's task oriented, and therefore not people oriented, basically they want to control, but they don't care about the collateral damage that gets, how do they control? Think on that for a moment. How would a person who doesn't care what you think of their actions assert themselves, assert that control? How would a person who's above this line, who is a people person, who says, I will get as much task accomplishment as I can, but I will not sacrifice relationships to get that. How do they control their environment? The answer to that is they sell their change. They influence people to make change happen. They don't demand it. They sell it. See how that works? I want to revisit an old, well, it's not old, it's, it's still very current, the DISC test that many of you may have taken. We do it in our two-week program. DISC is a personality profile test and, and system that has been around for a long time. And I'm going to plant DISC on top of this stuff. This is the DISC material. But this might sound familiar to you. This is your D personality up here, OK? Your directors, the people in charge. Task-oriented controllers. These are your I people over here, people who create change but do it through influencing people around him. These are your S people down here. They don't necessarily want to go out and control anything. They want to maintain relationships with people. They are good soldiers. This is by far the biggest population we have. And over here we have our Cs. People over here in the C group are task people but they're below the control line, yet they, yet they push you from the back. This is really neat. Not being controllers, they don't want to be out front telling you how to do things. But they'll be back and they'll tell you, hey, chief, I'm not telling you how to run the place. I'm not telling you how to run the place. But there are standards out there that you're flying in the face of. There are rules we should be obeying. There are standards, court cases, and actually, there are actually police chiefs in jail who have done the things you're kind of starting to do. And I think it's my job to help show you where those standards are so we all stay healthy. That's the things we like. See people like detail, correctness. They want to be right. They're called patient perfectionists. They want things to be done correctly per standards. These are your, your CPAs down here. These people over here. You're social people. They have hearts. They'll get out and they'll cry and they'll embrace and, and they just, just love other companies. These people do not work well in a cubicle. These folks up here are the fun folks. They're the influencers. These folks over here are the demanders. That's kind of the baseline here. What I want you to show is this. In the communication setting, a D personality talking to an S personality, that's a pretty short performance appraisal. The performance appraisal here is about a two minute conversation. This person only gets going after about an hour and a half warm up on how's the hunting, how's the fishing, how's everything else. These folks want to have discussion, they want to be warmed up to the discussion. Let's make this the other way around. The S is in charge of a performance appraisal, appraising a D personality. The S it spends an hour talking about things, how's the family, 
How's the job going? How do you like that new squad car? The whole time the D is sitting across the table, task oriented, saying, just get to the point. Give me the news. It's hilarious how this goes. Don't ever ask a C personality for the details. Show me your data on the claims you're making about my performance appraisal. Support what you're saying occurs. They will pull out three ring binders dated with photographs and everything else. They are data collectors. They are case makers. We need people like this in policing. Two weeks prior to an annual performance appraisal, an I personality is thinking to himself, I should have taken some notes. It's, it's funny because we're actually opposite of the other corner. My point here is this. This could go on and on into the interview. This could go on and on into, uh, into communication styles. But my point with this is we are all different, and we all like certain things. I's are going to like. People who have fun on the job. S's are going to like, and they are going to reward people who treat people with respect. C's are going to reward correctness. A job that was compared to the standard and was held to be on par. And the D's are going to like people who take charge. The first thing you teach supervisors in performance appraisal training is self-awareness of what your filters are, what you like and what you don't. Because you tend, you tend to reward that that you like and punish that that you don't. When you find in the future, and you'll find shortly here in this course, you're going to change it to a different type of performance appraisal that has written standards of behavior. These people up here will consider those to be suggestions. <laughs> These people down here will consider those standards to be chiseled in stone. That's how we're different. Be aware of what you like. And the best thing you can do with those personal biases, and these are biases, is to get them outside your belly and let your brain make the decisions based upon the objective criteria listed on the form.